Hi class, it's Bill Berry here with the last video in the Programming with Choices series and this time we are putting together knowledge that we've had uh, explored all through the quarter so far and putting it together in one cool way and this is the way that we're going to talk about here. We're going to this slide and that's going to be working with form validation. So in the past we learned how to construct HTML forms, we learned how to write simple functions that would let us get to that data and uh, now we're going to add selection on top of that so that we can do validation. Data validation means making sure the user does what we ask and provides things that are correct. So here is the basic idea. We're first going to create this form and then we're going to make sure that the user has done what we ask. So the form is going to be a simple one with employee data where we ask for the name and the number of withholding allowances. Now withholding allowances are used to calculate payroll. They're used to calculate specifically the withholding tax and that is how many withholding allowances or dependents, you can think of it that way, do you want to claim. The more dependents you claim the fewer dollars are taken out of your paycheck. So uh, let's just figure out this form and then we'll add the value on top of it. So you should see that the form looks very familiar and that if we look uh, if we look at the stuff here we see that we're going to have the name and we're going to have a text input area called emp name. Again not that's not shown here that's for us to access it later and we're going to have another one a text form for the withholding allowances and it's being called allowances and then we have a button that has the value submit that puts the text submit on the button right so that's a simple form so if we look at that in code that should make perfect sense to us now what do we want to do with that what could go wrong what do we want to make sure that the user's done correctly well let's start with this one the employee name probably shouldn't be blank, right? We should make sure that that name is always supplied. So if there's an error with that, we want to make them do it again, right? Keep typing in the form, keep working on the form. You've seen this in web-based forms where it will maybe highlight the thing in red or maybe make a red box around it or certainly put you back into the box and kind of put you into that specific text area so that you can see that that's where you need to type. We could turn the text red or something if we really wanted to get into it. We won't quite do that. And then what about the withholding allowances? Well that shouldn't be blank either. That should be zero or a greater number than that. So it should be blank but it also shouldn't be less than zero. So so these are simple validation things that we could do. Uh, let's talk about how we're going to make that happen. So let's jump over to our code and look at that. So here is simple code for that. And while I'm at it, uh, there we go. All right, so here's our code. So, so far so good. Well, you've seen this on the slide. Nothing happens here. We don't have yet an on click event because we're going to fill this in in a minute. So what we're going to do up here is we've got to figure out what we're going to write here. We're going to have a write a function. And that function, what should we call that? Well, in this case, we, we can name functions anything we like. So in this case, maybe validate sounds like a good name, right? So we're going to create a function called validate. Again, we automatically type parentheses and we automatically type curly braces because we're going to write the code that is part of that function in here and we're going to indent it so that our eye sees that that's all stuff that's part of the function. Now down here in the on click event we have to call whatever we name that function and we have to put parentheses, right? If you don't put the parentheses, not going to run and you're not going to see this error in your console either. So you need to make sure that you are careful. Copy and paste or type carefully using uh, validate or using autocomplete. Now, what do we want this thing to do? Well, the pseudocode for this, let's let's think about it. What are all the cases that can be uh, present here? What are all the scenarios? Well, first, there can be something wrong with the employee name, right? So maybe I'll even write this in code. Uh, case number one, uh, something wrong with name. Case number two something wrong with allowances. All right? Oh, sorry, I'm not typing well here. And then case number three is everything is cool. All right? So those are the three cases that we need to handle. So how do we need to do this? We need an if statement because we need to do different code. We need to execute different code based on the scenario. So how many scenarios do we need? Well, in this particular case there is the two specific scenarios and then the third one is really 
everything is okay, right? That's the that's the default case. If nothing's wrong with the other two, then everything must be okay there. So if you think about it, we really need two conditions to make that happen, and we are going to need an else if because we've got these first two cases as well. So let's go through that and see if we can uh, code that up. So first case, something's wrong with the name. Let's put an if statement, and then again by default we're going to automatically type this and then we know we need to come back. So how are we going to say um, you know is something wrong with the name? Now we could come up here and capture these things into variables that's not an entirely bad idea or we can just directly address them in code. I'm gonna do the latter but we certainly could put them in variables before we uh, move forward and that's not such a bad idea. Alright so first thing is uh, we can say something like if the name is blank well what is that? Well we can say we need to start with a document then we put the name of the form emp data notice that's right here right and then we drill into the form and we want to pull out the name notice that's the name of this element name of this text box right there and then we want its value right you have to look at its value to see what the user typed there and if that is equal to blank now what is what is blank what is empty well you have to put two quotation marks and you put them right together right don't put any space in between them because you're not saying whether it's equal to a space you're saying if it's equal to nothing right if it's empty so that's our first case is something wrong with the name so we can erase that because we've handled it and then what's the code that's going to do that well we want to first tell them that something's wrong so here we can use our alert please enter employee name or employee name must not be blank right something like that please enter employee name all right so that's great we can tell them they that we want them to do that but we have one other cool trick up our sleeve and that is what if we put them back in that box regardless of which box which text area they were in when they press the submit button we want to put them back in this particular box so that they can start typing and they actually see the little blinking i beam cursor there so they know that's where they're what that's the problem area so here's the trick for that document dot emp data dot name dot okay, ready for it focus we are setting the focus when you're talking about a graphical user interface focus is where's the current place where the user is has clicked and is typing so we can set the focus using the focus method the focus function and that will set the focus back to that name box very cool now, if that's the case, that's all we have to do. We just have to put them back in the form. We're just not going to move forward. Tell them the alert, put them back in the box. So that's great. Now, what do we need here? Well, these are mutually exclusive, right? We don't have to try to solve all of these at once. Let's just solve the name problem and then put them back in and make them do that. But we can solve a, in a second scenario. We can say else if, right? So now we want to take care of this. Something is wrong with the allowances. Well, we're going to have something very similar, right? In fact, we can just copy this text and put it down here. But instead of the name, we are going to see whether the allowances value is equal to blank right so if the allowances box is blank then okay what are we gonna do well we're gonna do something similar so I'm gonna copy these two lines just be careful please enter uh, let's say allowances right and then instead of name setting focus I can do uh, allowances dot set focus right dot focus so that's the case for the allowances right but that only takes care of the case where it is equal to blank right where it's blank not about less than zero so what can we do with that well uh, we could make another else statement but what if we just want to handle them both here right this is the everything wrong with the allowances place well so what we can do here is we can add some logic we can say if it's blank or if it's less than zero so how would we do that well we need to say or and then I'm gonna come down to the next line because my line's getting too long and so I can do the same thing document dot data dot allowances dot value is less than zero right 
So notice now that I can use my logical operator so I can handle more than one case because this is all part of the allowances check. So I can say if it's blank or if it's less than zero using the OR operator, right? So that lets us do a compound condition, a more complex condition that uses two things. And always remember, check when you're using AND and OR to make sure that this thing is a valid condition by itself and this thing is a valid condition by itself, but both are, right? Both are perfectly valid on their own, right? Now, we're typing a lot. We might have stopped and checked the, the code for the enter employee name because if that's wrong, we're copying and pasting bad code. So I would have advised us to do that. We didn't yet. All right, so this takes care of the allowances and this says alert and then we want to put them back into that text box. So we say employee uh, document.empdata.allowances.focus, right? Set the focus back to that text box. Oops, I already had that, sorry retyped it for no good reason. All right, now what about this everything is cool case? Well, if something was wrong with the employee name, we took care of that and sent him back into the form. If something is wrong with the allowances box, we took care of that and put them back in the form. So the only other possibility, if we didn't do any of that, the only other possibility is everything is cool, everything is fine. So what do we want to do here? Well, here we can certainly uh, move on. We can say alert, uh, data accepted, thanks. And then we can write some stuff to the document. And by the way, that will have as, an, as a side effect, it will erase the form and write onto a new page. It's like they navigate to another page. So we can do stuff like this, uh, you know, whatever we would normally do. I can do var emp name equals document dot emp data. Uh, type carefully here. Emp data dot uh, name, right, dot value. Okay, so I can grab out that, uh, that name from the form, so that's great. And then what else am I going to grab? I'm going to save our allowances equals document.empdata.allowances.value. And I'm going to probably turn that into a number, right? So while I'm at it, I might as well turn it into a number. That's great. So I've grabbed out the name and I've grabbed out the allowances and turned it into a number so I have those variables now I can write them so I can do something like document.write and I didn't have to grab those out I could use the whole long form but you'll see why it's going to get too long if so employee name colon and now we're just going to prove that we can grab out that data just like we did before and because I want these on separate lines I'm going to put a break tag which means I have to put it as a literal so when we're talking in script to the HTML page remember we have to sort of send all that stuff like that. Then I'm going to do the same thing, document.write, uh, withholding allowances, and then I'm going to send out the allowances that I have grabbed into a variable, and I'm going to send out a break, so I do that, I do that, I do that. All right. So in theory now, we have all these things coded up. We have our form down here. We have our three cases up here. If something's wrong with the name, tell them and put them back in that box. Otherwise, if something's wrong with the allowances, tell them, put them back in the box. If not, then that must be cool and that must be cool. So now tell them it's accepted and grab the stuff out and write it to the page just to prove that we can. We could do more calculations, but that's fine. Now, we've got some testing to do to make sure everything is working. Right, launch in Firefox. Right now, good idea to put on our console. No errors so far, so that's a good thing. So let's just leave the name blank, but let's click in here and see what happens. Submit. Please enter employee name, and then ooh, look at that. The little blinking eye beam or a little blinking cursor is sitting in employee name. Perfect. So now I'm going to type something in there, but I'm going to hit submit. Please enter allowances. Great. Okay, so uh, let's type in a an invalid allowance. Let's type in negative one. Please enter allowances. Okay, now our message isn't great, right? Our message isn't very specific. It's not, it's not nice to expect them to enter something in a certain range and not tell them. So that's kind of cruel. So we'll fix that in a minute. But it worked, right? Uh, will it take zero? Zero is a valid employee withholding allowance. So submit, data accepted, thanks, and then of course it writes it to the form perfectly well. So in this case, everything works well except we're confusing the user by not really being specific. So we might want to change this instead of enter allowances um, zero or greater. 
right? So we can put some information in there. Uh, these are okay inside the quotes. They'll just be interpreted as standard text, right? So we say, please enter allowances zero or greater so that we're not confusing the user and we're you know, really specific in there. So that's how you can do form validation. And that's pretty slick, right? That's pretty slick code. Now it's a lot of code for our brains to take in. As beginners, this is the most that we've written and the most you know, detailed logic that we've written. But that works really well. And you can see how if and else if and else work together to solve these problems and a couple of new tricks like either you set the focus and don't exit you know don't go anywhere or in this case we move forward and write stuff to the form which or write stuff to the page which will erase the form and move to a new page which is fine so that's a pretty slick set of code and feels like a really useful and you know a really useful thing that we might really use in, in real life so pretty darn cool so let's see if there's any other topics that we want to pick up right here's our form validation slide and then here's the pseudocode that we talked through and then here is a reminder about mutual exclusivity and then here is some code that might implement that but you've already seen that so that's no surprise all right, and then this is just some comments to remind you of what these things are going to do. Now we're done with this series, so I'll point you at some resources. And so if you want to look at a different kind of selection statement that we did not cover called the switch statement, you can go look here. Uh, we're not going to cover it in class or need it, but it's there for you if you want to learn a little bit more about uh, you know, a little bit different way to do things. That brings us to the end of selection. So thanks for watching this series, and uh, I hope you're feeling a little more confident in your ability. Do some practices. In class, we'll do some together, but if you're watching online, do some practices with your own scenarios. Modify the scenarios that we've shown here or look at the challenge slides and see if you can go accomplish some of those tasks. So thanks for watching and look forward to seeing you in the next series where we'll talk a little bit about looping or iteration.